In his new methods of conic sections, John Wallace extended the analytic geometry of Fermat and Descartes. Like Fermat, Wallace allowed algebraic relationships to define curves, and like Descartes, he translated geometric problems into algebraic equations. For example, Wallace constructs a cubical paraboloid where the intercepted parts of the diameter are to each other as the cubes of the lines drawn ordinate-wise. Now Wallace's figure is not very readable, so we'll redraw it with the important components. So if at some point on the curve alpha, the line drawn ordinate-wise is P alpha, which intercepts P A on the diameter, and at O, another point on the curve, the line drawn ordinate-wise D O, which cuts off D A on the diameter, and the defining property of this curve is the ratio P A to D A is the same as P alpha cubed, to DO cubed. Wallace also presented a new method of finding tangents. So again, let the curve be given, and let the tangent at alpha meet the axis at some point f. So Wallace let PF equal f, the subtangent, PA equal to D, DP equal to A, and P alpha equal to P. Now, by the defining property of the curve, the ratio PA to DA is P alpha cubed to DO cubed. Now, PA is D, and in our figure, DA is drawn as being past P, but remember, in Wallace's original diagram, it could be on either side, and so Wallace wrote it as D plus or minus A. And P alpha is P, so P alpha cubed is P cubed. And so we can solve for DO cubed, which will be Now, by the properties of similar triangles, the ratio PF to P alpha is DF to DT. Remember, PF is F, P alpha is P. DF, again, is going to be F plus or minus some amount. And so now we can solve for dt, and then for dt cubed. Notice the tangent line is outside the curve, so dt is greater than do, which means that dt cubed must be greater than do cubed. Substituting in our values, and we can simplify this to get And if we let A vanish, in other words, we let A be 0, we get, so our subtangent F will be equal to 3D. So going back to our picture, remember our subtangent is this length here, PF, and Wallace provides a way of finding the point where our tangent line intersects the axis of the curve. Now, Wallace's procedure glosses over some important details. However, we can make it rigorous with a little bit of work. So to begin with, let's think about the curve that Wallace is considering. Suppose alpha is a specific point on the curve, so PA and P alpha have definite lengths. Let PA be, say, K and P alpha be H. If we let DA equal Y and do equal x, the defining property of the curve is that PA is to DA as P alpha cubed is to DO cubed. And so we can write that as this equation. And if we simplify, we get... So Wallace is talking about the curve we describe as y equals cx cubed. Now remember, Wallace's graph looked like this, so that Wallace's graph is very different from our modern graph of y equals cx cubed. So let's draw a more familiar version of y equals x cubed. Let alpha be the point of tangency and extend the tangent line to f on the y-axis. Now our goal is to find where this point f is, because if it's too close or too far away, the line clearly isn't tangent. So let's draw our line drawn ordinate-wise. And consider some point t beyond alpha. 
and we'll draw a line ordinate wise to the curve as well and label some points. Now, as before, we'll let PF be F, PA be D, DP equal to A, and P alpha equal to P. Since the curve is y equal to x cubed, then P alpha cubed is PA, and so P cubed equals D. DO cubed, that's D to this point O on the curve, well that's going to be DA, and so DO cubed is D plus A. Again, by similar triangles, PF is to P alpha as DF is to DT, and we know PF and P alpha, and if we look at our picture, DF is going to be F plus A, and DT is, well, let's leave that alone and solve for it. And the cube will be But our tangent line is outside of the curve, so dt has to be greater than do, which means that dt cubed must be greater than do cubed. So we could substitute in our values, and do a little bit of algebra, What's important is to recognize that this inequality must be true for all a greater than zero. So if we let a equal to zero, then we're able to write the inequality. And so 3d must be greater than f. We can interpret this result as follows. Provided the intersection point is no further than 3d away, the line through alpha will be beyond the curve for all points beyond alpha. However, it's possible the line might intersect the curve before alpha, so we need to analyze that situation as well. So again, as before, we'll let PF equal F, PA equal D, DP equal A, P alpha equal to P, and again, since the curve is Y equals X cubed, P alpha cubed is PA, so P cubed equals D, DO cubed is DA, but this time dA is d minus a. And again, by similar triangles, we have dt cubed. And again, if our tangent is outside of the curve, we need dt greater than do, so dt cubed is greater than do cubed, and so we find Note that f is greater than a, so this quantity we're subtracting is a product of two positive numbers. Since this inequality must be true for all a greater than zero, we need, and so f is greater than or equal to 3d. And as before, we can interpret this result as follows. Provided the intersection point is at least 3d away, the line through the alpha will be beyond the curve for all points up to alpha. Put together, the point F needs to be no further than 3D away so that we don't intersect beyond alpha, but it also needs to be at least 3D away so we don't intersect before alpha. And so that means our point F should be exactly 3d away from p in order for the line f alpha to be tangent to the curve.